Yes, sir. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Bonita's House College here on SABC2. Baba and Tagam Chokanagandam. So, Lom Yamo on the Lakhs and Tropes into Guinea and Nongan and Sir Tamed and Nikona. Of course, I'm Dr. Victor Ramatisi. In a new look, Sizang Naka. Little one I have started by Sister Sissing, Mrs. John Shamaro, friends, or I am Robidu C. Hair loss. Now, it can be as a result of biological factors influenced by gender and heredity, such as male pattern boldness. But it can also be due to many medical conditions and their treatments, especially in women. Or can take a Maya Maklasa is in dress for a non cheap papa, no bank calabas, or the hairstyle is in Gakumbi, it braids. Now, please don't forget to join us. Our discussion by joining us, calling us on 011 326 4740 with your queries and comments on hair loss. Or you can send your SMSs to Bonitas 33723. And also joined in the studio by Dr. Rakesh Nuwaj, who's a dermatologist from Arvid Medical Center in Campton Park here in Gauteng, as well as Dr. Pauli Lempofu, dermatologist from Morningside Medi Clinic. Oh, Morningside Clinic? Morningside Clinic here in Johannesburg. Colleagues, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Dr. Lempofu, before we get to, you know, confusing ourselves and maybe the viewers in the process around um, hair loss and issues, uh, related there to. Can we talk about how is hair produced, understanding that it comes out of the skin? And is it really part of the skin? Mm -hmm. It is part of the skin mm. because it, it consists of a hair bulb mm. and the follicle, which mm. is the shaft. Yes. And um, it's, it slants through the, de the deep dermis, mm. through to the epidermis, the lower parts of the dermis, mm. up to the, the epidermis, and then it shoots out. Okay. It's part of the skin because all that complex of tissues are called the skin. And um, it's, it's produced in the bulb. There, there are some ears. The, hairs, the, the hair cells divide in, down in the bulb, mm -hmm. and then as they divide, they are pushed up. And it grows at the rate of 0 0.4 millimeters a day. 0 0.4 millimeters a day? Yes. That's, that's the, quite a lot. Eh? That's, the, that's the average, yes. Now, what is its function? Because uh, there must be a function to just about everything that we have on our bodies. It depends. I mean, with, with um, depends on what you believe evolution to be. Mm -hmm. But as we, it, 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 it has always been having a protective function. Okay. But also, there are many other causes, uh, I mean, protection like um, identification, mm -hmm. you know, fun identification function. We know that some animals are black, uh, black haired, some are white haired, some are combination, brown haired. So identification even in, in, in ra for race. Mm -hmm. And um, also in, 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 in um, it's b as it is connected to a muscle yes. that is smooth muscle, it, in a time that that muscle erects mm. or rather contracts, mm. and then the hair shoots up. So it helps also in trapping heat. I see. That's why you get goosebumps. I because see. Because the hair then stands up and traps the heat. I see. That also works for that. Oh, so that's why even emotionally when people are, are, are worried or anxious, they say they have yes. good goosebumps yes. because those muscles yes. get They, get they contract and then the hair stands up. Stands up right, yes. So it does have some heat uh, convention or uh, what? It, uh, so the process, people who are more hairy are possibly can deal with, with, with heat. With, with they probably with can deal much better much. in yeah. colder weather. Yeah. And so people who are hairy will be, will be more comfortable in colder weather. And people who are less hairy will have mm -hmm. more comfortable in hot weather, you mean? Because yes. they can sweat and then the sweat can then be used to, to, to keep mm -hmm. the skin uh, yes. cool. It's yes. quite confusing sometimes. Huh? Mm. Yes, that can now, be. Now, why, why do you have people who, other people who are more hairy than others? I think there are some genetic factors as well that makes you more hairy. Uh, can be more hairy in certain part of the body. But most of the time it's genetic or hormonal factors also. Uh, you might have a bit more of uh, uh, testosterone and other hormones uh, in your body. That's when you end up being more hairy than so, others. So, so testosterone... In other ways, when, it, when there's more of it, uh, it will make people hairy, which is why men are more hairy than women. And those women who have a little bit more than the average amount of testosterone in them mm -hmm. can have hair suits and can have, can, can have hair in certain areas where they otherwise would not have Yes, hair. there are certain hormones that can increase the hair growth yeah. in areas where, you, where women don't want it to yeah. grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. We'll come to that because yes. uh, we're talking about hair loss today, mm -hmm. but also there are people who have, who have hair in certain mm -hmm. areas where they don't want May it. May I say uh, something, please? Uh, yes, by all means. With, there's a paradox with that. Mm. I'm just thinking of that now. Because the, the testosterone also causes hair loss. 
It was it was for male pattern baldness, yes. which is mm. in in both. There's a female pattern pattern baldness, which is similar to that mm. in the, the female version. It's because of the 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 the, the, the influence of dihydrotestosterone mm. on the hair for that they lose their hair. That they lose their hair. <laughs> So it, so it depends it which type of testosterone. Exactly. Because testosterone is just a group. I mean, yes. there are the many variants of the testosterone. Yes. So if you have that di dihydrotestosterone that you're mm -hmm. talking about, it mm -hmm. might actually make you bold instead yes. of growing your hair. Yes. Now, explain to me, Dr. Mbo, why you are talking about this now. Why do uh, children, they grow up, they have hair on their scalps, and just about, just about the only area where they have hair, they get to the age of about 13, 14, 15, 16, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. They start having pubic hair. They start having armpit mm -hmm. hair mm -hmm. when they did not have it before then. Now, how does that happen? There's an age-related increase mm -hmm. in uh, hormone production of testosterone. Mm -hmm. So those, th those areas, uh, the hair is dependent. It's, 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 um, ad, uh, it's dependent on testosterone. Okay. The hair in those, um, uh, the, the, the upper the lower abdomen, the, um, the armpits, the, 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 the chin and all that. Yeah. We call that testosterone dependent hair shafts. So when they start producing um, testosterone because of the menarche, because of um, uh, mm. when they get puberty, that's it, yeah, when puberty they reach in puberty. English, yeah. mm. <laughs> then they start producing the testosterone mm. and then that hair is produced, is I stimulated. See. Those okay. hair, hair follicles are stimulated to produce the I hair. See. Similarly, there will be some strength glands that only start developing at puberty, uh, which is why uh, it's, it's almost unheard of in Ghana, you know, 9 or 10. So there are sweat glands also that come up, you know, when they become at the time. Active, they just yeah. become active. Yeah. I see. Yeah. They become active in puberty and they start producing mm. a different type of sweat yeah. to lubricate certain areas of our body where I those see. types of hair come mm. up, basically. Ah, interesting so. stuff. Okay, now let's come to what we are talking about today. Now, let's talk about you refer to it already, male pattern baldness, mm. that you do have some men who lose mm. their hair mm. on, on their head. Mm. How does that happen exactly? There's a, it's, a, it's a complicated um, hormonal process okay. where there's an, th there's an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase okay. that also gets involved in the, di in the, in the testosterone there. Mm. That when you, when you, when you, it, there's that, that, that reaction, I, I'm trying to make it understandable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it becomes more sensitive to the mm. testosterone. Is it? It, it activates yeah. it. Uh, okay. It activates yes. it. And when it is activated, what happens? So when, when it becomes more sensitive to the testosterone, the hair, instead of, it becomes thinner and thinner. Mm. We call it mm. from terminal hair, which mm. is very visible, mm. to venous hair, which mm. is very mm. fine hair. Yes, mm. And slowly, slowly, slowly the hair just disappears and you start getting male pattern baldness. So, so this almost certainly happens only in men? Actually, the female pattern baldness mm -hmm. is also a similar mechanism. Mm -hmm. We just, the name is a little bit different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is both of on both male and female that mm. it occurs, but mm. it's more common in males. I, I, is, in is, males. It, is, it, is it this type or this is, a, this is something different? Yes, uh, this type of hair loss. Mm. Also, this is a male pattern baldness. Mm. He lost his hair mainly in the crown area. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. Okay, so it can, it can start in the front. Mm. Uh, we, we just want to call it a receding hairline. Mm. That's how it starts. And when they don't want to admit that they're growing in Pantana, <laughs> now I've got a receding hairline. Mm. Yes. It can start at the back in certain people, like Desmond mm. Tutu. I mean, you, you swear he's fine, but only when he goes, they don't realize that he's balding from the back. And he says that some people, he's balding from the front. Mm. Yes, mm. And, and then they use the hair from the sides to try and cover it. No, we'll talk about it. We'll talk. Now, 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 so it runs in families. Mm. If it, so in other words, so if you've got a father who's, who's bold, you're more likely to be bold yourself. It doesn't that just happen on its own. I think it does. I think if you have your father that's bald early, at an early age, yes. not if he's bald at the age of 70, mm. but if he's bald at an early age, I see the patients start getting bald at an even earlier age than the father has been. Yes, that's so true. both the, the male and female patients mm. start losing their hair early. Um, and that, that is getting more and more common nowadays. Is it a foregone conclusion that uh, the, the older you grow, you, you'll grow bold at some point, or is it something that is exclusive to certain dynasties? As you grow older, your hair gets thin and fragile. Mm. That yeah. we see. But the specific 
male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness, which is a version, the female version. It's a specific um, uh, tes uh, testosterone-induced hair see. loss. But in females, it's, it, it leaves the, the front intact. Mm. So it's, it's on the crown. I see. But it leaves the front intact, and we know that it does run in families. I saw a lot of women in the suit with it, and I thought they were just doing a hairstyle as well. But there, is, there mm. are also hairstyles mm -hmm. where people just cut that they shave their exactly. hair. So there is another hair, hair, there's another hair loss, which is a scarring type. That's mm. why it's important to biopsy, especially I in see. females. Okay. Yes, because you can get this, what you call CCCA, okay. central centrifugal. It's a scarring alopecia, which is genetic also, okay. which also is on the crown, but it spreads centrifugally. Okay. So, so if, if whether or not it is male pattern baldness, mm. you go to you go to make a diagnosis, and mm. you dermatologist will want to take a piece of, of the hair there also and to go and make a diagnosis yourself. You don't just look at a person and say you got male pattern baldness. It could be other reasons. You Sometimes, say. when Sometimes. we are in doubt, I see. But ninety nine percent mm. of the time, mm. it's quite easy to make the diagnosis. E what is whether you call it baldness or you call it a receding hairline? I get in Kugaber and the faster get a faster one. Is uno the arm hair affair or the Come on, Zamo food. Or again, Daddy Buffet. Oh, we'll continue our discussion on the hair loss after the break. Hang on, Ruja Papazo, Haramatu. Mukhais, Rebode Zaudi, Mahumpi, and the Menedi Pata, Rudi with a tanka, or Rabala de Quet, or Tibango Hot Haila Murir, Hotta Hair Loss, Cassisma. SMS Now let us hear more about this or some of the medical conditions that are common and that can lead to hair loss. Just watch. You can mention inflammation, that's eczema, psoriasis, lupus, things like that, and sarcoidosis, uh, nutritional causes. There's a condition called telogen effluvium, where because of any stress in a patient, whether it's, a, whether it's surgery or emotional stress or anything, a few weeks after that stress, the hair is lost all over. We can get hair loss from drugs, things like vitamin A, chemotherapy, oral contraceptives, and many other drugs. When women try to beautify themselves and it backfires on them, it's, it's very tragic. Amongst people who use chemical relaxers, who use traction, that is pulling off the hair, either by styling it, um, sewing in heavy, heavy uh, hair pieces and things like that, you find that there might be a loss of hair from scarring that, that, that results from damage of the hair roots from pulling. You can get uh, damage of the hair shaft itself by, by chemicals. And sometimes you find that patients will have both damage of the scalp, of, of the hair roots from the pulling, and damage of the hair itself from chemical damage. The most important two points are prompt intervention, that is treatment once there's still hair roots that can be grown, because once you consult when there's scarring, there's nothing that can be done except hair transplantation. So I really urge patients to go early enough so that something can be done. The other thing that is important is proper diagnosis. It's important to have your condition well diagnosed so that it can be treated appropriately. Yo, you know, this issue of proper diagnosis, um, Dr. Polile, is, is a very important matter. And I think mm -hmm. it is quite important now that we have a public platform to explain mm -hmm. um, as to, to what extent can one go mm -hmm. if you have a hair loss problem. Mm. Uh, without consulting a dermatologist because mm. you know, there are advertisements all over the place today, hair mm. this, hair that, hair mm. loss, and mm. I'm afraid some of them are not run by medical professionals necessarily. Mm. There's people who mm. possibly are more trained in you know, beauty therapy and mm. those kind of things. Mm. What would be an advice if you have a, a certain type of hair problem? Don't even bother going to these places. When should you consult mm. a dermatologist? Mm. I think as soon as you discover that there's something wrong, the, the, usually the, the, the hairstylist will tell you because they can see your hair and they know it. Mm. Your usual hairstylist will tell you that your hair, there's a, they will tell you that there's a problem with your hair. Mm. If it's a, good, it's a good stylist, they won't just say come for treatment, whatever that is. Mm. They but they do have treatments. Oh, they they I want a treatment, but tell her, 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 tell her,
A so these are some of the stamps that they use. Someone, mm. very, someone who's on your side, yeah. who really, really cares for you, okay. will, will, will tell you that yeah. you need to go for a diagnosis. Yeah. They won't just say they're treating you when they don't know what they're doing. Exactly. Okay, just, let's just round up this issue now. Do you find men coming looking for treatment for, for male pattern boldness, or it's really a small number? Of, a lot of them are just happy to go about with their mpanzanis? I think a lot of them are happy about it. Mm. Mm. But when they are younger, because when they are like 20, 22, when they start losing their hair, mm. then they tend to come. Okay. More and more African men are starting to come now. But mm. uh, before, we used to see mainly Indian or, or white uh, males that used to come. But slowly, slowly, the demographics are changing. Is there a difference in, in racial groups? Do you find that certain racial groups are, are tend to get more male pattern boldness than others, maybe? It's difficult to say because uh, it depends on what patients come to you. Some of them, it doesn't bother them. Some, Some races, it bothers them more. So to get an accurate answer to it, I'm not sure because... If you do treat them, what do you use? Firstly, we, we diagnose it. We make sure that it's male pattern baldness. But treatment is very, very simple. Mm. We either use certain pills, uh, finasteride, or we use a mixture of minoxidil and finasteride. In so spray. you give them pills? and the hair will grow back. It can grow as back. As easy as all that. Yes, mm. in, in most patients it's quite simple. And sometimes the same pills are in a spray form. And that's even simpler, they just use they, the They spray. just spray on the, on the scalp and then the hair regrows? It then, yes, it does regrow. And on, they must be told that the treatment is lifelong though. Is that so? So once they stop it, it will revert back slowly. So once you, are, you, you start treatment, you've got to be committed to continue that treatment mm. for yes. the rest of your life. And they must be told that it takes four to six months to start seeing a difference. So be very patient. No need to waste a lot of money. These are not very expensive stuff. And start treatment early. And you can, your hairs, most of the hairs can be protected and they can still grow for years. Is transplant an option? for example, for guys who've got, who've got baldness? Yes, obviously it's a last resort. There mm -hmm. are other methods that can be tried. Minoxidil mm -hmm. can be used. Uh, now we use prostaglandin uh, antagonists, the ones that are used for eyelashes. Mm -hmm. It's experimental now whether scalp hair might also respond. So um, they take it orally, the no, prostaglandins? They, they the, it was discovered by fault, actually, mm -hmm. when uh, glaucoma was treated and then the eyelashes would grow. Okay. So now it's experimental to see whether the scalp, um, the scalp hair will also respond that way. So it's, we're excited about that. We hope it will work. Okay. Um, there are other things like um, needling. Uh, some are anecdotal, well, not very, some don't have enough um, evidence, but you can't dismiss them. If mm. there are many, um, there are many companies or people or researchers that that say it works, but we haven't really put much in, much effort into really really having proper studies to mm. see whether those are needling plays a big role. Uh, um, some things things like um, injection of caffeine into the scalp, mm. uh, light treatment <laughs> like um, eczema light. Mm. So all those are mentioned as as uh, things that can improve um, hair loss. Then they, they don't, there are not many studies for those okay. other ones. Minoxidil, finasteride, as is mentioned, laser. There are laser combs mm. that can be used that are also... So why do you use the comb? Because you've got no hair. So how, how does <laughs> you that just work? You just yeah. move it over, over your scalp. Pays with comb. Mm. Yes. This is just very nice. <laughs> yes, apparently it does. Like we need to do proper studies because yeah. we can't continue to dismiss uh, things mm. that we haven't tested. I see. You know? Now, you, you'll recall that uh, during the uh, Cordesa negotiations um, yes. the, at the World Trade Center here in Kempton Park, there was a skirmish that, uh, yeah. that happened this one time, and uh, uh, one politician, you know, manhandled another, and then we all saw something, yes. a hairpiece from a man, a uh, male politician yes. that fell to the ground. Mm -hmm. what, what is it called again? A toupee. Yeah, it's a contraption that you use to cover. It's look, it looks like hair. We, we, we call it HIP, hair I bought. It's a wig. It's a wig. It's a tiny wig yeah. that is designed for that specific area, uh, unlike a, a, the, a the full okay. hair. So how does it sit now? What, 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 what anchors it so that it will go? Because we all did not know that actually that particular individual was bald, mm -hmm. but then mm -hmm. it only realized on that day. Mm -hmm. So clearly it was not sitting you yes, know, properly. securely and firmly. Yeah, it on. does move. There okay. are cases of it moving. Mm -hmm. There are different, that some stitch it, 
Okay. But I mean, the, the usually it's some waxy, like rubbery okay. material that scrapes. Okay. But I mean, if you if you really try hard to pull out a tube, may not to pull it. Now, in the insect, we uh, mention was made of some of the medications that may lead to to hair falling off and. I think the, the most commonly known would be chemotherapy that is often used uh, to treat cancer as well. But what are some of the other common uh, medications that, uh, that, that can actually lead to that? Uh, they talk about oral contraceptives and if, if, if it is really a common occurrence in oral contraceptives, which are some of the oral contraceptives that are currently being used? First of all, I just want to say lots of people think that, uh, that cancer causes hair loss. Mm. And once they start losing hair, especially in the African population, they think it's cancer every time they think, but uh, because they see pictures on TV of yeah. children without hair. Correct. So it's a myth. The, the leukemia children and some of them, yes. Yes, mm. so it's the chemotherapy that causes that, the medication that causes temp most of the time temporary hair mm. loss. I so see. that that is a question. Is that it temporary, that hair loss? Mm. As soon as they stop the chemotherapy, the hair, the hair grows back? Uh, slowly. It mm. takes some time, yes, but it, it, most pe patients do yeah. get hair growth. Okay. However, medications, like you said, some of the contraceptive pills do cause it, but not in everybody. It depends if you're prone to hair loss. Mm. Then it causes it to mi miniaturize, makes it more smaller. Um, I cannot give names here, but they all, it, it all depends on you if you're vulnerable to it or not. Not everybody on contraceptive will get hair miniaturization. Medication-wise, isotretinoin, like we use for acne treatment can cause that, uh, can cause hair loss. Even any of the medication can cause hair, lots of the medications we use. But in most of them, if you stop the medication and it gets substituted with something that is less damaging to the hair, the hair can always grow back. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Ah. When you return, we'll continue our discussion on the hair loss. You stay with us, please. Welcome back, you're watching Burrito's House Call here on SABC2, and today we focus on hair loss. Now we hear more about a disease called alopecia areata. Let's watch. Overall, it's alopecia areata, or in a practice where there are lots of Africans, it's um, alopecia induced by hair practices. Alopecia areata is a condition which occurs on the scalp or elsewhere in the body, which is an autoimmune condition, meaning that it's automatic, not caused by anything external, but the, the immunity of the patient acting up and attacking its own hair. Um, it's associated with many other conditions like thyroid conditions, eczema, atopic eczema, and other autoimmune conditions like vitiligo. But on its, on its own, it, it, it has no cause. It just occurs for no reason. Alopecia areata is very peculiar in the form that it occurs very rapidly. It's a very quick onset of action where the hair is just lost in a few days completely in that particular area. The skin is soft to the touch and there are no symptoms. So the patient doesn't feel any itch or pain or anything but just loss of hair. There are many things that can be done for this condition. Corticosteroids are used, which are um, injected um, along the border of the, of the hair loss, or they are applied topically. If, in, a, in a case where you catch it early enough where the hair is falling, you can even use oral steroids, which can, which can help. But other, other methods are inflammation, uh, induced inflammation, where you apply an irritant to the skin to induce a sort of allergic reaction, which in the, in the hope that that will in, induce hair, hair growth. Um, things like uh, PUVA, which is soralene and ultraviolet light, is a specific treatment where a patient goes under light treatment. Uh, of note now, there's eczema laser or eczema light, which has very good results. Hey, this laser seems to, to be a solution to just about any problem with skin and hair these days. Am I, am I correct that it has somewhat revolutionized management of a whole lot of conditions in this area? It does, it does help uh, because the light penetrates deeper. It, it stimulates the skin to, to produce more cells, more hair cells and divide more. 
but it cannot be used for everything mm. or all types of hair loss. Mm. It needs, people need to have the proper expertise, proper finance also, it's not something mm. cheap. And it's not more effective than other treatment. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's just there, you try it if other types it, of treatment. It works for other people and mm. it doesn't work for yes. Exactly. Yes. Now, I think, I think we, we've done justice to artificial reactor, Dr. Mbofu. We've mm. explained what the condition is. We've explained the various forms of treatment and how mm. it is diagnosed. What can it be confused with, in other words, so that you find hair loss and you think it's artificial mm. reactor, whereas it's other things. I can think of what the Mapedi call mm. pudi. You know, mm. pudi is yes. a, a tinea capitis or yes. ringworms. Yeah. Yes. So yes. it can be easily confused yes. with that. Mm. The difference is that artificial reactor is very soft and smooth. I see. The skin is, um, is, is not scaly. Okay. And pudi is scaly. It's um, there are different types. There's white dot, black dots. There are different types of mm. uh, of, of, of fungal infection. Some of it is just diffuse uh, scaliness. Some is uh, specific patches. Mm. Uh, I find that the one is that this is, is pudi. This yes, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, the okay. scaliness gives yeah. it away. Mm. Yes. Um, uh, you can get uh, mm. syphilis can also give very very vague uh, loss of hair. We call it moth-eaten mm. uh, alopecia which can be confused. Well, sometimes alopecia areata can be diffused and look very, not as specific as we, we usually see it. Um, I find that sometimes when there's a type of alopecia areata which is along the hairline, which I is see. called ophiasis. I see. That one has lots of, it can be confused with traction alopecia in Jibaba. It can be confused with a condition called fibro, frontal fibrosing alopecia, which is a very bad condition because we usually diagnose it late and it's, it's scarring along the hairline, mm. uh, usually associated with pigmentation. I see. The doctor has to be very sharp and, and catch it early mm. and not think if you can just be advised to stop pulling your hair. They have, there has to be treatment, specific treatment. To deal with so we, the dermatologists have to be very sharp and tell them apart. So um, I can't think of any other... No, but it's fine because I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Nuwaj. Dr. Nuwaj, do you know in Jipap? I think it's, is it traction alopecia? Oh, yeah, that's the yeah. camera food. Yeah, okay. We do hear that word what, what is it called in, prop, in proper medical English? It's traction, traction alopecia. alopecia. Traction, alopecia. traction is pulling. Yes. Alopecia is, of course, loss of hair. Yes. Now, this is in Jipap. Yes. One course is in Jipap. Hey, in the water, then to baguette, out baguette, water. The tight mm -hmm. hairstyles that yeah. African ladies have does cause pressure on the hair roots mm. and this so, so the hairstyles where, where the hair is being pulled at in cornrows or mm. very tight pulling with time or cornrows and ropos or mm. and uh, ugloga, yes. ugloga, all of all of these things yeah. yes and with time you can see certain parts uh, the hair starting to disappear and uh, the giveaway for it is most of the time it starts from the front or from the sides and it moves upwards yeah. And even celebrities uh, like mm. Naomi Campbell has mm. lost a hairline like this. But now Naomi Campbell, uh, she's always in weaves. She doesn't. She doesn't do ukrina uh, no She doesn't have dreadlocks. Now, how, do, how does she get in Japan? Right Maybe she was doing it when she was much younger. Okay. There are pictures of her where she has this condition. Mm. And. Uh, I think it's maybe a bit too late to treat her now. Are, the, are these styles, the, 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 the ones where you pull, the only reason you don't get it with, with other types of, with the weaves and some of the stuff that people use before they put on the weaves? You can get it because when they put on weaves, they, bra they braid underneath usually. Yeah. That can be a cause. The, the glue that they use to attach, yeah. sometimes when they rip it out, yeah. when, they at, when, they, the when they attach the, yeah. the, 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 the thing, they, when they pull it out, they can pull out hair roots yeah. and cause um, traction alopecia. But um, curls, all, all the, all, anything that causes traction. But what I want to say is that I've had, I've braided my hair for 11 years mm. with this, uh, my husband calls it the tower. Mm. It's, it's long. But I, I, I don't really have as much traction alopecia as, as is possible because I control what happens. Mm. The hair yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. because the, the, the hair has, has, has nerves. Mm. The, hair, the hair bulb, the, mm. the bottom of the hair, has nerves under, around it. Mm. God was very wise to mm. do that. Mm. You feel it when the, when the, the, hair, the yeah. hair follicle is yeah. being pulled up. 
So when you feel pain, mm. stop the process. I'm not a vegetable. Yes, I'm not a vegetable. 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 You have to control that. Yeah. You have to control that. When you feel pain, mm. it's too much for you. Yeah, tell them to, to tell them to the stop. Time. How do you treat in Chipap? First of all, they must change their hairstyle. Okay. You must tell them to stop doing those types of hairstyles because not everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. But once you start getting it, it's time to change mm -hmm. things. Do you want to suggest that there are women who've got, who, who are prone to Njipapa because maybe there's something wrong with their scalp or something wrong with their hair necessarily? Uh, you see, African hair is already thinner in diameter, so it's weaker ah. compared to Asian and That's white hair. So any pressure on it mm. will cause more damage than other mm. race groups. Mm. So yes, the African hair is it's African sensitive. Hair, really. It's more mm. sensitive. It is. It is. It, it is. It cannot really withstand a lot of these exactly. pressures. Yeah. But like she said, I think the people who, uh, the hairdressers who put much more pressure on mm. it, uh, those people, those uh, patients that go there, that mm. tend to get it more often. Oh, no. So if you do it properly, I'm sure the chance of getting it is much, much lower. Mm. So yeah. it all depends on your hairstyle and, and the hairstylist, I guess. Yeah, as well. Mm. Yes. Dr. Mbofu, I mean, just by washing it, I mean, the hair was just falling off like that. Mm. Could this have been because of the chemicals that... that I was going to say that th there's nothing as, as bad as combining chemical, uh, maybe relaxers or dyes and braiding. Yeah. That's a bad combination. Okay. Because all of them weaken the hair shaft. Yeah. The hair is the I mean African hair is already a lip is already flat as 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 I mentioned. Mm. Already flat is in knots. It the the critical tears very easily. So it's already entangled. Mm. So when you relax it, you all you weaken it further. So that has to be they have to do it properly. You can't tell a black woman to stop doing her hair. I think you have to understand how to advise them. I see. You can't yeah. tell me to walk, to walk around with my natural hair. Yeah. But teach me how to do it properly. But, but who do you teach? You can't teach the end user. You've got to teach the, the beauticians the yes. and the hairstylists. But there's lots and of I hair. And I don't think that teaching is happening. It's not point. happening. Mm. But there's lots of hair, hair, uh, hair treatments as well. Pe home treatments as well. People do it at home. You shouldn't relax too frequently. You should be careful about the time, the duration uh, that it has uh, with your stop hair. Stop that. Before the end of the show, I'm mm. going to ask you to give ladies out there some mm. advice on mm. how to look after their hair okay. to ensure that they can prevent or at least minimize, minimize. hair loss. We'll continue mm. our discussion on how to choose your hair loss or how to choose what we're going to do when you have hair loss after the break. Welcome back. One is Rosato of the Council of Salita Timon of Bonita's house call for SABC 2A. And today we are talking hair loss. Now, there was a lot of controversy. Uh, last year, I think it was, and uh, I think the charge was led by uh, no one else but uh, uh, Professor Kobal, I think it is, from, from the University of Cape Town, the, the Department of Dermatology out there, about something called former, former aldehyde. Mm. Uh, that is contained in some of the products that are being mm. used to relax the hair. What is this controversy about and what are your views? Uh, formaldehyde, uh, they, they found out that formaldehydes help to straighten the hair by, by changing the, the shape of the sulfur bonds and the bonds in the, mm. on the hair shaft. And they call it Brazilian, in most of them, uh, they call it the Brazilian uh, keratin. Mm. Uh, they have it in the Brazilian keratin. Now formaldehyde, if given at high percentage, mm -hmm. if you come in contact at high percentage, can lead to different types of cancer, especially if it absorbs in your system. I see. Um, that's, that's what uh, the controversy was, saying that there are some products that the concentration of formaldehyde was too high, and this can lead to, to cancers. But it, it hasn't been investigated properly. I think uh, we need to, to do more research about it. But, but it is it cause for concern. Do, Dr. Is. Bofu, is, is it your view that some of the uh, chemical products we use on hair, especially mm -hmm. African hair, especially in South Africa, might contain high levels or concentrations of formaldehyde to warrant the worry about mm -hmm. the causation mm -hmm. of cancer? Uh, the Cape Town Institution is a very reputable uh, institution. Mm -hmm. 
So I, 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 I believe for them to mention that, it means they have really done their homework and they've checked. Mm -hmm. And so we don't really know much about it because I think they're still busy with it. It was just to, to warn us that we should be careful and warn our patients. I because see. we don't want to let your patient use something and then it is found to be bad. I see. The, so it is something that is looked into now because apparently they, they checked many of the, of the sort of supposed to be reputable uh, products and they're still busy now verifying their tests and all that and found that there was a, high in, a, a high, higher than expected percentage. Mm -hmm. But some of them are imported. I so see. I'm not sure whether they are South African produced or imported. But I think we should, should be careful, no, no, not just throw it out. We should just say, let's look into it and okay. so that we can be sure. So the jury is out on, 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 on that research and will await the outcomes thereof and hope that it will be the kind of research that mm. is done in an unbiased mm. fashion and then we peer reviewed and then we can take the results from there. Let's just go back to environmental factors that might affect uh, hair loss. I'm, I, I, I often hear people when they say, when I'm in Durban, my hair is nice and bushy and rich. When I come up to Joburg, it becomes brittle and easy to break. Are they, or is there any credence to this type of observations? Maybe they're less stressed in Durban. Maybe that's why the hair grows better there. Uh, sometimes some people, genetically, the hair is drier. Mm -hmm. So when they go to more humid uh, places, their hair seems to be more moisturized and more subtle. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on how how the hair is, what the genetics is. So if you have a dry hair in Gauteng, Durban might be better for you, but not always. I think pollution, mm -hmm. um, environmental factors like global warming, all our hair and our skin is exposed to the outside. I think mm -hmm. all these will have effect on our hair in the long run, but it's very difficult to test this. Mm -hmm. We have to, when the patient tells you this, this has happened, we have to give them some uh, uh, credential, we have to say mm. yes. And the, we gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. Because, because we cannot this and test it easily. Yeah. Yeah. So Stress so. and hair, that, this is very difficult to believe and to comprehend. Mm. What is the relationship exactly to something? We know it has been confirmed that telogen effluvium, uh, which is a loss of hair, sudden loss of hair, a few weeks after a stressful event, mm. whether it's an emotional, whether it's emotional stress, whether it's surgical stress, anything that can impact mm. your life, whether emotionally or physically, can drastically affect your hair. There's a, that, that one is, 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 we know that that exists. It's a, it's a known diagnosis. But we also know that stress always aggravates conditions. It aggravates infections. It aggravates your resilience to diseases. Mm. So any condition that you have will be worse. And your perception of your problem will be, will be also heightened when you're stressed. I see. So you will think you're sicker than you really are. Mm. But there is another condition of, 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 of hair, which is called trichotillomania, mm -hmm. where the person is stressed and pulling out they her pull hair, out or his hair, mm -hmm. usually it's hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> usually it's hair, hair. Genders, yeah, but, usually <laughs> but it it's yeah, usually okay. her hair, mm -hmm. but it, it, it occurs in, in, in all people. So it's stress can affect, but it, we know that we, over, we overuse that. I see. We blame stress for many things, but it is um, a known, proven. What about diet? Does, does diet have a relationship with, with hair or hair loss? Definitely, lots of people nowadays are going on different crash diets mm. uh, where they want to lose weight very quickly. And especially if you go on a diet with low protein mm. and low folic acid, and if you start losing your vitamins, um, you definitely will lose a lot of hair. So we must always ask a patient what type of diet they're taking. Because if you are fat and you lost 20% of your body weight within a month or two, there is a problem there. Mm. So diet definitely uh, causes, can lead to hair loss. You must always have a proper balanced diet with proper nutrients that help proper hair growth. Now, if you've got thin hair, like you said, some people yeah. have naturally thin hair that is brittle and easy to break and therefore can yes. lose it easily. Are there certain foods or uh, vitamins or supplements that you would want to recommend or suggest for such people? Uh, such people are born with it. So it's genetically, it's very difficult to recommend something. Mm. But I've heard patients say that when they take zinc and folic acid, mm -hmm. it, it helps their hair to grow better. Mm -hmm. But that problem would never be solved. However, these two compounds, these two vitamins will help them improve a little bit. I see. Pregnancy and hair, any relationship, Dr. Mpofu? Some people when they're pregnant, it's still the telogen effluvium um, mm -hmm. uh, diagnosis. When they're pregnant because of the stressful 
um, a, so the stressful event of pregnancy, especially delivery, mm. they can lose their hair, okay. but it grows back. Okay. I never pregnant them. I have sworn this, so I have turned this, so I have this. So you got to. You mm. gotta deal with them, you know, uh, carefully in so far as that is concerned. Mm. Are there any specific medical conditions that are clearly uh, associated with hair loss? I mean, she mentioned in the inset thyroid disease, some of the mm. thyroid diseases, but are there are there others uh, that, that are clearly associated with hair loss? Uh, definitely, uh, autoimmune diseases uh, will cause you to slowly your hair to start thinning, mm. even uh, lupus or any other autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune means like she said, your body is producing something mm -hmm. to come and kill the it hair. It attacks root. its own cells. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Even there is a type. This is. So wh which one is this? This is discoid lupus. Okay. Um, which has caused damage and scarring on the, uh, on the scalp. I see. This is also one of the diseases that cause it. There are other skin diseases actually, like severe eczema can mm. cause you hair loss. Okay. Uh, severe psoriasis of the scalp for long term. Even a ringworm, if you if if you have it for long term, it might mm. the hair may never grow. So m lots of the skin diseases can lead to permanent hair loss, and a few of the systemic diseases like thyroid, autoimmune diseases will lead to hair loss. What is dandruff? Dandruff is a dry scalp. It's actually they think it's uh, it's called seborrheic eczema. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a mild type of eczema where your skin is being produced quicker than normal. Some people can associate it with what a type of fungus called malassezia, but mm. most of us think it's a very mild Can it lead to hair loss? Not commonly. Okay. Not commonly causing hair loss. Uh, okay. Not that I know of. Dr. Mpouf, you wanted to talk about this a little bit earlier and I stopped you and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are angry when I did that. Mm. I want to unleash you now. What mm. advice do you want to give mm. To ladies, you've already said and declared. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, as an ambassador of uh, African <laughs> women, that uh, the, the, the African women should not be forced to go with their natural hair. They must be given an opportunity no, to beautify if themselves. If they like natural hair, they should. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. those that don't like natural yes. hair, or those that have unmanageable natural hair, Correct. we shouldn't just leave them in the left because then they they resort to practices mm -hmm. where we can That's advise them. Okay. Things what advice like do you want to give them? <coughs> We don't, I mean, dermatologists don't like relaxers because okay. we know they, 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 we see so much damage okay. from them. Relaxers damage your scalp, they, they damage your hair, they can lead to permanent hair loss, you don't like them. No, but, but, but people use them okay. and some are not damaged. Okay. So we'll advise the, the ones that get damaged how to, pre to lessen the, the likelihood. Okay. Not to, do it, not to do it frequently. Now, what do you mean by that? If it's, if it's supposed to be every three months or every six weeks, Adhere to that. Mm. Don't just do it too frequently. I see. Don't leave the, the, the product for too long, okay. longer than it's required. Okay. When you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you relax, relax only the growth. Mm. Don't repeatedly punish the, the hair that has already been relaxed. I see. So the stylist is the one that has to be trained, really. So, so, so you have to relax. What is the interval between the relaxations of the I hair? I think it depends on the products. Yeah. Uh, if I recall, uh, I haven't relaxed for a long time. If I recall, mm. it's about six weeks to, 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 to three months. I think it depends on the product. Should you give your skin a break, your hair a break, after, after relaxing and, and uh, human hair or whatever you mm. call these things and relax? There must be a time where you just exactly. go. Exactly. You go, they can't, I'm excited people, they get a shower more. Do you have to do that? Don't die and relax. Too, too close because all, all, all of them can impact the shaft. Mm. So don't do any of those very uh, worrisome mm. pro and then go in and, and, and braid also a few days later. Mm. Don't, do don't do everything at the same time. Do you like close weave to each as other. a dermatologist? Do I? Do you like weave? I've never seen you with one. We personally? Yes, no, I haven't seen you with any. Um, you may have, but, uh, but do you I like it? I thought yeah. I didn't like weaves. Mm. I don't need to, it's very easy to, to criticize something you don't need. I see. You see, some people have problems. We, we teach people to camouflage. Yeah. We, ca we tell them to camouflage. But as a dermatologist, and, and the processes that you have to engage uh, before putting on the weave and uh, the frequency you have to do it, okay. you always want to advise people to be cautious. Yes, when they, have to they do have to be cautious. We mm. have to teach them how to do it properly. Because if you tell mm. them not to, mm. we're not being fair. If I, I, if I have two fair meters enough. long fair hair, enough. and then I tell people not to but weave. But the point is made. So relaxation that precedes the weave 
causes yes. you a problem. Exactly. And for that reason, yes. you want to advise caution. So, I'm going to say, 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 Watching Bonita's house call here on SABC2 and welcome back. Some Masipiri Sir Mushutella Ranadi, we are Kama Horora Solatan, Imbaratan Abaherana, and get some key messages from our guests in the studio around hair loss. What advice do you want to give South Africans out there on how to prevent hair loss and manage it? Okay, it's difficult to prevent hair loss. Like she's already talked about, uh, the hairstyles needs to be mm. done every six weeks. So once you start getting hair loss, I think you must get a diagnosis, a proper diagnosis at a qualified doctor mm -hmm. that will identify the exact cause that's causing this hair loss and then change your habit. Mm -hmm. And once a diagnosis is done, most of the hair losses we can prevent. Mm -hmm. uh, we can prevent it from progressing. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to expend a lot of money. Go to the right specialist and they will give you solution and means that don't cost 10, 15,000 Rand mm -hmm over the next two, three months. Well, somebody starts charging you that money, you must become suspicious. Yes, mm -hmm. and also you must, if you go to someone that's trying to charge you that much, try, try and get a proper diagnosis I first. See. If the person can't tell you that, then there is an, there's walk a away. problem. Mm -hmm. Walk away, walk mm -hmm. away. Dr. Ampofu, we can't, we can't beat about the bush on this one. Yes. If you can't get a diagnosis, what are you treating mm -hmm. them? So people mm -hmm. must walk away from such yes. situations and get professional help. Yes. Your final advice? Yes. He has said most of the things, mm -hmm. and I agree with him. Mm -hmm. But I'll just add that please treat scarring. The it's been practiced to the doctors, the plea to doctors. Mm -hmm. Treat potentially scarring alopecia promptly. I see. Because it's not reversible. I see. And how should they treat it? Some yeah, of them, they need antibiotics, yeah. uh, t injectable steroids. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, depending on what their diagnosis is. They must just refer it because I think, to be fair, an mm. average general practitioner, even if yes. they are worth their salt, mm -hmm. will find it difficult to treat scarring alopecia. Mm -hmm. But in a general sense, to mm -hmm. those people, like you said, you beautiful African mm -hmm. women that must look after their hair, mm -hmm. what final word of advice do you want to give them? They should go to dermatologists mm -hmm. that understand because, because we need to work together with the stylists mm -hmm. to formulate ways that are acceptable to our patients, mm. not just tell them not to do things. Mm. We should tell them how to do them healthily. We should work together with the stylists. We, we are all for the beauty of the, of the woman. So at an industry policy level, you, need to want, you want to see stylists and, and dermatologists working together, working together not to, to confuse ensure that our patients. Absolutely. One says you need yeah. this, one says you need mm. this. We should all, we're all together. We have Bazuil. one patient. Bazuil. Must be trade and must tell you find about later, Nina. Nizo ba kpeesha, nizo ba pono no ngamu ba kwazi. Wezo nani ba zoni fundi sabo ba sebenzi sa. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. It might look like a vain subject, but I think hair loss is something that worries many, many, many people, and that has led to many people feeling very, very depressed and self-esteem being low and not confident about themselves. Thank you very much, Dr. Nuwash. Thank you very much, Dr. Mpopo. Hello, na barati ba sheti ba dateli ba thaseti. Ekasi chana ba manu kemba na ndoro. Thank you, hamwe. Thank you, habedi. Thank you, hara. Rona hara ti manka di taba isi di paabi. So sign to kureka ni fera hair is at in the We'll be back next Saturday with health warning signs. You don't want to miss this one. Here on SABC2 at 8.30 in the morning. Arko Palenghape, Bikini Tlang. Tato Haidamrena. Thanks for joining us today. For me, Dr. Fitza Ramoresi Ramasisele. Ya khaula yaya. Kena manisela, kimita ngwamele You take care.